Last year, I came to Texas with a question. Is Titan Gilroy the real deal? This year, I came back with a different one. Not about him, but about us. Why machinists keep showing up, what we're hoping to find, and what happens when a message becomes bigger than the man saying. The first thing you notice here isn't the machines, it's the people. Everyone comes for their own reason. Some for curiosity, some for learning, and some because the shop's been heavy lately and they just needed a spark. Some just wanted to see if the magic still holds up. Whatever the reason, they showed up. I really, I've admired Titan for a long time. I've watched his videos from California on the Haases and just watched how he's changed the industry, exploded and just does different things, pushes machines to the limits. And just trying to come connect with the machining community, check out some new machines, check out new work holdings. I don't know, see what we can use at my shop. So I'm in a family business. So I've been in the machining world for many moons and we're about to expand our shop. So I wanna make sure we're heading in the right direction. I just like getting out of the uh, out of the facility, getting other ideas. Um, I have yet to go to a different machine shop or a show like this and not have a lot of takeaways. I'm excited about what Titan represents and what he's trying to do to change the industry. Uh, I came to the show to support it. I've been a founding member of the Titans of CSC Academy, and uh, I love what he's doing and how he's he's bringing a different view to, to the struggles that we face with training our young people and, and getting people excited about the trades. I think I first met Titan at IMTS maybe in 2018, uh, but I decided to come down to this because I wanted to meet all the other shop owners and production leads and CNC machinists who see and value this community. It's, it's incredible to see how new industries are popping up around manufacturing, right? I was out in Austin yesterday. They have a new Gigafactory that's popping up down there. But for me, I love checking out these events because I get to see how all these different industries are pushing innovation. My first impression was, wow, uh, I love trying to stay ahead of the trends, ahead of the technology if I can, because I think as a small shop, you have to incorporate as much technology as you can. So with this show, I get to see the latest and greatest. Let's bring new people to the trade, um, bring some excitement into it. And that's what I'm hopeful about. He's, he found a way, he found a recipe. No matter who I talked to, one theme kept coming up, education, real education. The kind that opens doors instead of closing them. Machinists see Titan's push for education as more than a talking point. They see it as fuel, a way into the trade, or a way to stay in it. And in a world where shops are starving for new talent, education matters. If you want to be a uh, manufacturing powerhouse, how can you do it if you're teaching on like obsolete machines and your kids are doing obsolete you know, techniques and stuff? So we're doing everything, just lift the entire trade and workforce, all of it, to the highest level so we can compete as a nation. I think that they're opening doors for people. They're making it more accessible. You know, it's not just, hey, we're gonna put you on a manual machine right off the bat. And now it's just creating like just levels and layers of tutorials for every single machine. So anybody that's in this industry has a go-to place to learn whatever they want to learn. Right. You know what I mean? I got into it at 23 and I always say the minute I smelled coolant and saw chips fly, I was sold. I think there's a lot of that awareness that Titan brings to the industry. Big time. I talk to guys all day long. Keith, I was an IT guy. Keith, I was a carpenter. I went through Titan's building blocks. Now we have four or five CNC machines. So it's just the awareness. It's bringing people into the industry. When I got into this industry, the first company I worked for, they almost were acting like I couldn't be a programmer. They didn't have the capacity to train and everything like that. But I grew up, like I was a generation that grew up on computers, like since I was a little kid. Kids nowadays, computers and programming, like that's a dime a dozen. Like they're, every kid knows how to use the computers. Where like a generation ago, all those guys grew up in garages and fixing cars. So like on the mechanical side of manual operation and even like service, we had a generation really good with that that didn't know computers. I suggest it to everybody. Like if they want to get into machining, I'm like, dude, go check out Titans of CNC stuff. He will teach you everything from not even knowing how to touch a machine, setting it up, programming, everything. Three axis machining, there's a lot of people that can do it. And just have my suits be able to go to the next level is five axis machining. But you know, how do you break into that? I've had some people out in the industry that are like, man, I don't know if high schoolers are ready for that. High schoolers have grown up with 
a computer in their hand, if you get them the resources, they're ready to run. And that's really an important thing. But underneath all the noise, there's something quieter, something shared. Everyone I talked to held two things at the same time, concern and hope. Concern for the shrinking workforce, for wages and respect. Whether the next generation will pick up a trade that built the modern world, but gets treated like background noise. And right next to that, hope. Hope in the kids who do show up, hope in shops adapting, hope that this industry, our industry, still has a future worth fighting for. You've got to look at automation, right? We all know there's a skills gap, but I had a very good conversation with a customer that said we have a productivity gap as well. We should be done buying three axis mills. We should be looking at five axis and automation. I think we're too far behind on education and we need to, we need to advance the education or teach what's practical today. The technology that's out there, that, that, that to me is a very exciting to learn. Something that I've been seeing good progress in that gives me hope is the fact that more of these companies are working together to show off the things for the users, for all the machinists out there. For too long we've stayed, oh, I'm a machine uh, builder, I'm a tool provider, I'm a work only. Look at my stuff laying on a table and use your imagination to pretend it's in your shop. Just show it, just show it running, show the things in action. The first one is I've talked to several shop owners, even last night and this morning, who are actively working on building educational shops in their areas. And the Titans of Academy content is fantastic for that. The expectation that that kind of education is available yeah. and partnering with high schools, trade schools, community colleges, and not just saying, oh, we have an intro to machining class. They're like, we're gonna put you on a palletized five axis machine and teach you how to do all that stuff. AI is gonna be huge. Nice. AI automated tool paths, that's what we're gonna see change a lot over the future. Because. And we're gonna see a lot of work come back in the US. Everybody's gonna have plenty of work here in the next year. Right now, manufacturing is on fire and 2026 is gonna be huge. But at the same time, not everybody's prepared. You have all of these shops that everyone talks a good game. They got great salespeople and yet they're still running like they did, you know, years and years ago. If you look at the coolant, look at the work holder, look at the machine tool, look at this, look at your manpower, look at how much time the green light's on. If you put all together, you're running at a snail's pace and right. stuff. So I just wish we were closer. People are learning how to make things at a lot younger age. There's like 34 million additive 3D printers in the US in households today. So all of a sudden, my seven-year-old daughter knows how to log onto an iPad, pull up bamboo, find a model, learn how to slice it, load the material into a printer and make something. You have a seven-year-old who now has a manufacturing and building mindset. That's what we're gonna see going into the future. I think hope is really seeing some of the younger people come back in. It really is. We have seen some people come in and really with an entrepreneurial spirit, they wanna create their own companies, they wanna have their own product. Really this true American innovation spirit, right? That is super, super hopeful. I think that we need to work on more people understanding how things are made. You know, as, as people start understanding more and more how things are made, they understand the value of the people that are doing the making. And if you ask machinists why they stay in this trade, why they want others to join, the answers hit fast. Pride, problem solving, making something real, building the things the world depends on, but rarely sees. They don't romanticize it, they just know why it's worth it. This trade will give you an avenue to grow, not only as a person, will help you grow mentally, and I think it will just open up opportunities for you to provide for your family, grow as an individual. I mean, it's, it's absolutely endless. And I, I love how you'll just never reach the end in our, in our, in our field, so. Yeah, I started in 94. In 94, I felt like that's when the skills gap started. Big time. And we saw that continue because stuff went overseas. A lot of jobs and work went overseas. It's all coming back and there is a new generation that is finding this industry. Like if you like self-improvement and you actually like want to go make yourself better, you're always going to be able to have something that you can do to like increase your skills in this industry. You're never going to like peak out. Like there's not, right. there's never a top. You're always going to have an ability to self-improve in this industry. And I think that's like one of the greatest things about it. That's what makes it fun for me because it's always a new challenge. It's always a new opportunity to learn. Get out there, get out there. And I don't care if you're in high school, college, or if you actually have an established career, you're 35 years old and you're flipping your life around saying, I want to get into manufacturing. Call up some companies near you and say, hey, this is my situation. This is who I am. I just want to tour of your place. Call places, get no's. You're going to get that place that's going to be like, 
You're calling for a tour of my what? Uh, yeah, come on in, I guess. And tour that plant. Get to know manufacturing. I think what we're trying to do is change the perception, right? There's this idea that if you get in the trades, maybe you went second class, right? You know? And I think we're trying to change that. These are sophisticated machines, sophisticated products. What we're trying to do is we kind of have our own education pipeline, but I want to grow that so like we get better skilled laborers, but the whole industry will get the benefit of that too. But we're having a lot of trouble getting young people to understand that manufacturing is not about the four Ds anymore. Um, you know, dungy, dirty, the other Ds, and that it's clean and it's exciting and that in everything in the world around you and how it's built and how it's made, you can trace it back to a machinist. And Titan's team, same story. Strip away the noise and you're left with people who genuinely love machining. We have a lot more machines. So we got bigger machines, better machines. So we're still ripping chips. That hasn't changed. Oh, of course not. <laughs> I mean, the longer we sit in the community, the more people we touch, the more partners we get to bring on. So I would say just really the scope of really bringing as many people as we can in this industry. Everything's bigger, man. I mean, this is a manufacturing year. 2026 is gonna be incredible. So we've actually doubled the amount of machines. So if you look at machines in general, including CMMs, we're close to about 50 machines in here, where we were probably less than 25 last year. I mean, part of what we always try to do is bring in the youth and bring in more people. And I like to think that we're continuing to be successful for that. And so I think that's why we see bigger crowds, we see bigger partners, we see bigger reach. The nice thing for us is that we get to show a worldwide audience. Millions of people get to see it. Like I did a video on uh, how to make parts more machinable. So hundreds of thousands of engineers watched it. And in all the comments, it's like, why didn't they teach us this in school? I'm gonna do this from now on. And it's like, yes, thank you, God. The technology's moved a little bit, but ultimately I think the dream, the vision, and the love for the people in the manufacturing community, that's the same way it's always been. One thing that did change this year was the partners. New faces, new brands, new machines, and people notice. You see it online, people asking why things shift, why the cast looks different, why the message stays the same. So I asked them. It's been a decade, more than a decade since we've been like building curriculum and giving it away and talking to people online and stuff. And therefore they're gonna spend their money based on what I say and what I do. So I'm gonna bring in a machine on different levels to actually give them something that I, I can feel good about. That, that is at the right price range for the level they're at. And it's because like you might be doing it in your garage, you might have a small two to four man shop, or you might have a huge aerospace company. And that's why we created our own kind of ecosystem to sell machines, sell tooling, sell, do all our different things, and then to use that to fund the education. And that's the only way that we can do it truly big. What struck me talking to Titan this year wasn't the volume of the message, but the precision behind it. He's still the guy that can fire up a crowd, but there's a clarity to the way he speaks now, a sense of direction instead of just momentum. The message isn't getting quieter, it's getting sharper. Less about the moment, more about the mission. Just walking the path no matter how dark and hard it is and refusing to stop. You're gonna walk through darkness and walk through light. Never quit. If you know and you have the gut instinct that you can accomplish something, go get it. And that that's what I've done. You know, I've had everyone talk, everyone try to chop me on my legs, but I will not quit. And you come out at the other end. So here's what I came away with. This whole thing, the energy, the belief, the movement, it isn't really about a person. Not Titan, not me, not any one company. It's about a trade trying to remember what it is and who it's for. People show up because they want to believe in something real, something that matters and is worth passing on. A year later, I didn't find a hero or a villain. I found a reflection. And it wasn't Titan I was looking at. It was all of us still fighting for a future that needs building.